Great, uh, we have a graph visualizing the time intervals when the object entered the video frame. Now let's go ahead and modify our code so that we add a window, so a, a window will pop up here when the user hovers the mouse over these quadrants. Let's do that. And the bokeh tool to implement the hover functionality is called the hover tool. And that is accessed from the lower level interface called models. So bokeh.models. So you want to import the hover tool. Let's now see how we're going to use this inside our script. And basically this is a method that expects from you some arrays with data so that the hover tool method will display them when the user hovers the mouse on these quadrants. So if the cursor is on this particular quadrant, let's say, the data for that quadrant will be displayed on the pop-up window. So what you want to do is, uh, once you have created your figure, you want to create a hover object which will be equal to the hover tool which has a tool tips parameter there and this will get as argument a list of tuples and in every tuple uh, you want to specify the lines of the pop-up window so let's say in the first line of your pop-up window uh, you'd want to have a start string and beside that start string you want to have the array with your data. This has this spatial decorator here so in our case uh, that would be the start column from the data frame. So we want the start time and the end time as well. So end for the string and end for the name of the column. So that should do it almost. But we need to add this tool using the add tools method. Uh, so the hover object, we need to add it to the tool menus. So this should be a dot. And that's it. And we're going to have to add more here, but let's see what we get this far. So python plotting.py. Here's an object, another one, and a third one, and quit. So, yeah, here is a graph, and we are almost there, but not yet. So as you see, uh, for some reason, Python is having trouble fetching the values of this start and the end column. And you also notice that we have two columns for each of these rows here. So the first thing you want to do is remove this column. You don't need this because Bokeh is adding it by default. So that's it. And now to solve the other problem, the main problem of the question marks, uh, is by adding the column data source method. Uh, which comes from the bokeh.models uh, low-level uh, interface. So column data source is a standardized way to provide data to, to a bokeh plot. So if you've got data frames, lists or other objects, um, some, for some functions in bokeh you need to convert them to a column data source object. Which actually is very easy and uh, let me do it here. So we grab the data frame here and then let's say column data source cds uh, that would be equal to column data source so the methods and the data you want to pass to it so we have a data frame in this case and then once you do that uh, you need to adjust here uh, not the figure object because we're not passing any data here we're just constructing the environment for the plot uh, but you need to modify the quad method. So specifically, you want to pass a source parameter here, uh, which should be equal to the column data source object. So CDS in our case, this one here. So you're telling Bokeh to use this data, and then you don't need to point to the data frame. 
So you just enter the names of your uh, columns there. So let's see what we have this time. Object, another one, quit. Here's a graph. And yeah, almost there. <laughs> but the problem is, this time we're not getting the days in the correct format. And uh, the reason to that is that the hover tool method, so here, we're here. The hover tool method is not being able to fetch uh, date times data types. But that's nothing to worry about because what we can do is we can convert the date times to strings in the data frame. So before before we pass the data frame to the column uh, data source object uh, method, uh, we convert the start and the end columns to string data types. So you already know how to work with date times. So in this case, we'll do some uh, daytime formatting. Uh, so what we could do is create another, so a new column, let's say start string. So the string version of the start column, which should be equal to the existing start column dot d dot dt, which enables you to do daytime formatting and strf time and here is now how you define your date to be displayed so we would want to display the year first and then the month a dash and the day after that and maybe a space there and then hour minutes and seconds and the same goes for the end column so end string and here and the same here and as you can assume now we need to reflect those changes in here so this should be start string and this should be the end string so we are displaying these strings now to the pop-up window and let's see how this goes this time First object passes there, second, and last, and one more. Quit. And we have a problem here, I suppose. Yeah, I didn't change the values in here. So I, I did completely the wrong thing. I shouldn't have changed the, the dates in, in this quadrant object because this series date times because we have defined the axis daytime here so this expects daytimes so here should be the start the original start column and here the end column so by mistake i put those values in there so start string in here and string in here so that should do it this time let's double check everything looks good and let's see. Here we go. Yeah, we were able to grab the data. Let's see. Mm, yeah, this looks good. So now I believe this graph is quite readable. And I believe you're able to pull out some information out of this graph. So you can see how long an object stayed in the video frame and when it started and when it exited the frame and i hope that you you find this useful sometimes as i already said uh, you you can use a raspberry pi server so which is a small computer and uh, host this application in your in that server and of course you can build and of course you can mount a camera in that server and have it capture some video uh, for your needs but most importantly, I hope you learned uh, from this practice activity. And I know that was quite a lot to consume. If you have any questions, though, I would be happy to answer them. So please feel free to ask them in the discussion board. And I'll talk to you later on in the next lectures. See you.